welcome back to my channel. This looks very different than things you normally see on my YouTube channel, but today I'm going to show you my experiment to try to reupholster my cat's cat tree. So, as you can tell, it's well loved, um, clearly. Um, some people would buy a new cat tree, but this cat tree is actually in really good condition, um, other than the fabric giving out. Um, part of this is me cutting out fabric for sample, went into the store, slash. Um, wear and tear. It's another wear and tear little mark. And um, this is the original color. <laughs> this is the, the color it is now, which is not very attractive. Um, you know, as a pet owner, this just happens. So, <laughs> um, yeah, so I decided they get kind of expensive to, you know, get cat trees. And my cat's very picky on um, cat trees. Like, this took a while to find one that fit her style and what she wants to use on it. So, I'm gonna stick to this one and I'm gonna reupholster it. And finding a pink cat tree is definitely troublesome. So <laughs> I'm going to reupholster this. This wasn't really made perfectly the first time. I think I got this uh, on Amazon. So I'm gonna fix that. It is clearly just uh, particle wood. Um, it did have a top level up there with this and, the, and this, but this uh, shelf, it just warped over time. It might have been this thing giving out, but um, she never went up there anyways. I know cats like height, just my cat wasn't really quickly cared about the top shelf, so I am just not going to use it. Um, so this is the fabric, let me show you. The fabric it currently is, um, which is a faux fur kind of material. Um, it is not the, like most amazing quality in the world um, it's okay um, you know but I wanted something super lush and super soft for my cat so I got her this one this fabric is super whoops strapping away this this, this is a super super soft I apologize I'm still getting used to this camera I just adopted it from my friend Jimmy who's also a youtuber and uh, yeah, he gave me this camera for my YouTube channel, so it was very nice of him before I filmed on my phone. Um, so this is still something I'm getting used to. But um, yes, yeah, so I got this fabric to be like sort of the underlining of the, the tree. <laughs> I don't know, what really see it except me, but aesthetic, you know. So um, yeah, first things first, I'm gonna take this apart. Um, I did sort of already take it apart. I thought this had an extension. Um, bolt on the other side for the tree and on the very very top of each stand it comes with these bolts um, right there and I thought I could use it for this but this is say it's not as uh, shallow I mean I mean, not as uh, well fit compared to this the length of this one versus this one um, I might just cover it with the fabric I don't know I haven't decided yet <laughs> so eventually I'm gonna have to repulture this whole thing again if it doesn't like if it doesn't already give out but we'll see I might just creatively cover it or make this like her doodad to hold her string um, toys that she loves so much. Um, my cat is a very rambunctious little baby. Um, you've seen her in some of my other videos just popping in. You know, she is an older cat, but she's still very, very, very playful. Um, so yeah, so first things first, I'm going to take this apart, um, take everything off, and Pretty much what you'll need for this project isn't very much. I mean, like, at least in theory, we'll see how well it goes. Um, but I got my fabric down there, and I am hopefully only going to need a staple gun, um, some scissors, and then maybe Mod Podge to attach the underlining in the bottom of this. We'll see. Um, but yeah, not a lot. And so, yeah, let's see what we can do. <laughs> So first we'll need to remove uh, the cat tree columns with the rope on them um, and uh, I am going to keep the dowel rope columns connected to the bottom one because it's such a pain in the rear to remove them. Um, my uh, cat tree came with these uh, pretty much pre-drilled slots um, to put the screws in and the screws um, in my case were kind of hexagonal. Um, maybe nanogon, I don't know which shape that is, uh, uh, holes for my screws. So I ended up using a flathead screwdriver for this one because I don't have the tool anymore. It worked just fine. Um, to remove the rope from the columns, 
I am using an awe here. Um, I have an awe from when I used to be a framer, um, and I use it for jewelry and uh, sketchbook making, but it's a nice tool to have, um, but it's also good to get in there and get the staples out. Um, but you can use a needle nose pliers for this as well. Um, I did both, but whatever you feel comfortable with. So now I'm gonna take my time to remove the fabric from the little cubby that comes on this cat tree. Um, this one was just glued in the bottom, it didn't actually have any staples in the bottom, but I'm taking my time to take it off um, with some scissors and just tugging on it because it really was just hot glue in my case. And um, whoever made this made a perfect pattern that fit the shape of it. So um, I cut off just the back panel, I don't know why I didn't show it this part, but I'm saving all the pieces that I removed from all the cat tree parts, um, both shells and the little cubby for my cat, and I'm just laying them out um, and putting them against my new fabric of faux fur that I picked out. And um, for my cat tree too particularly, I only needed a yard for this, um, but I would use some pearl pins to keep them in place while you cut out the design of um, each shelf and uh, coven piece. Um, after you have copied the design, if you don't know any sewing skills at all, this might be a little difficult, but um, it really was just the top shape of the cubby and then um, just a side panel, kind of very similar to if you built a bag. Um, I did leave the front completely um, sewn closed. Um, you can tell there's like a, a seam right here in the front. Um, and I will cut that hole open here in a second. A nice trick when you're working with faux fur is to take a pin and rub it against the, the seam line so it pulls away some of that fur so it's that line is not so awful. Now I'm taking the time to fit this over my little cubby for my cat and securing the top uh, staples to the cubby structure and um, while you're doing the staples by the way because this is for an animal um, when if if the wood rejects the nail I mean the nail the the staple take it out and try it slightly over to the right or over to the left and um, you know staple it in and I would use a hammer here to uh, tap down the the staple to make sure it's fully flush onto the wood you don't want your animal to be hurt um, I'm doing mine close to the edge um, for this part, doing just a couple staples all the way on the top um, so the seam lines match up to the structure of the cubby. Now flipping over where her cubby is for her cat tree, I am um, pulling the fabric um, towards the middle and um, not too hard but enough where it's snug, like super snug, and stapling it down. I am doing this in sections and going about an inch away from the previous staple and just making my way around. And again, make sure it's super secure, make sure the, stale isn't, the staple does not get rejected, and use a hammer to make sure that everything is secure into the wood. So now flipping it right side up, I am using my staple gun to make a couple staples into the side panel front where the circle opening will be. I am going to cut that open here soon, but um, I just wanted to make sure that everything was super snug around the cubby. This part is not required, but I really wanted to make the underside of my shelves a little more attractive on my cat tree, so I picked up some really cute cat uh, fleece fabric and I am going to use the Mod Podge 
to make sure the fabric is completely flush on the underside of my shelf. So this is just Mod Podge matte. It doesn't really matter if it's satin or, or matte, it's just been covered. Um, as you can see right here, preferably iron your fabric before you do this, but um, yes, you just make sure it's completely flush, make sure you do a nice coat of Mod Podge and uh, set that aside and do the same thing to your other shelf as well. Also, please know if you're doing like a pretty under fabric like I am here, that fabric can be the same exact size as the shelf, if not a hair bigger, because we're gonna pull the faux fur, the top side of the shelf, over to the back side anyway, so it really doesn't matter. So now I'm just taking my time um, to do this shelf. This is my very top shelf of my cat tree and uh, staple uh, parallel sides to each other first and then work my way to the edges and keep tugging the edges until there's nothing left and just staple the poop out of it. And um, again, make sure the wood isn't rejected. Make sure that you're using a hammer to secure all the staples into your shelf here. And now I'm taking an X-Acto knife to make room for the original um, a screw that's going to be attaching the entire tree together. I'm doing this on the both sides. Just take your time with this um, to just make an incision and make sure there's enough room for the screw to go through. So once you have done that to both shelves, put that aside and now we're going to cut that hole. So first I'm starting with the middle, just a small incision, feeling how far I want to cut up to the opening, the hole opening. I'm going to cut up to about an inch away from the hole opening and this is really hard to explain and kind of making a asterisk star sign, um, for lack of a better word, uh, just to make multiple incisions. I call this hula skirting when you know you're making kind of like this weird flappy thing opening. But I'm using this so um, when I hot glue the to the, un the inside of the hole that I have uh, enough incisions to grab the fabric and mold it over the opening. Kitty can can check it out, but this is what it looks like, reupholstered, but no string yet. I can put it together, <laughs> but she wanted to check it out. But um, yeah, it's going pretty good, huh? I did order a natural um, twine um, on Amazon. Should be here tomorrow, so we can get this going, huh? Look at this going for you. Almost done. Hang on. I did leave one still done so she could have something to scratch, but it's also one in really good condition, so I think it matches the other twine, so I'll just leave it the way it is if that one is fine. But my little kitty princess likes it, so that's good. There's a little under fabric. And then the other under fabric is under this panel. Um, there is no under fabric under this panel, mostly because um, the way the three prongs work on this, I didn't want to like accidentally mess that up. <laughs> and I don't have the tool that was built to make them originally, these. Um, oh, oh, hello. Just trying to rub her face on the camera. So I've been using a flathead screwdriver to get into that um, tool there. But um, yeah, it just seemed a little too difficult. So I didn't do that one. <laughs> Plus no one's gonna see it. What? Are you playing with me? Are you playing with me? Let me see. 
cute little kitty. This is Momo. Not sure if I mentioned that before. It's my little kitty Momo. I do have a tattoo of her. She is my little kitty best friend. I love her very much, so of course I'm gonna spoil her. Yeah, she seems to really like the fabric. Super sad. Yes. Yes. Well, tomorrow we will finish it. Right, Momo? So taking apart the top shelf again, I am going to add an additional layer on the top shelf of the faux fur just because I want to be extra fluffy for my kitty and I did have some extra fabric left over so I'm going to add an additional layer on the very top shelf for her. So now I'm just taking my scissors to trim away all the excess fabric and using my hammer to make sure all the staples are securely into the wood. And um, shortly after this, I am, since I already have the shelves taken apart now, um, I'm going to start doing the rope on all the column dowels. Um, and using a, a staple gun, I'm for the first round around the very end of it, I'm going to staple about an inch apart um, generous um, um, stapling on the first row and then as I go up I'm going to use the Mod Podge to secure the rope to the column. Um, this is just going to make sure over time when your cat uh, scratches um, the dowel that the rope just won't immediately separate from the row that it's still going to stay together so your cat can get all her little scr her or he can get all their little scratches out on the rope dowel. Just as a side note, as you're going around to wrap your rope around the dowel, try to squish the rope layers down um, and pinch them to so make sure that everything's compact, there isn't any loose rows against each other. And just do this in sections and take your time, throw something up on the TV, chillax. Um, yeah, this did take me quite some time, but definitely was worth it, as you can tell by the final result when my kitty gets to try it out. So, yeah. So once you get to the end of every dowel, use the last one or two rows towards the top and the bottom of each dowel to use the staple gun and the hammer to make finish out your uh, rope columns for your cat tree. That was love to say. Um, but now that I have done that with all of my cat trees, I'm going to re-secure all the shelves to the original placement and you're going to be pretty much done. But um, yeah, make sure that they're all super secure. Um, make sure all the, the screws are fitting into place with your columns and everything. And yeah, looking pretty great.
now that we're towards the end of finishing our cat tree um, and everything's done, all the hard harder work is done, um, take the time to make sure that there's no staples again sticking out, using your hammer to make sure everything is into the wood flush and it's done. All right, here it is, finished. And uh, looks pretty good. Um, I did get the natural twine from, whoa. Out of focus. There we go. From Home Depot. So yeah, I got 200 feet of it, which I did have some left, and only a little bit. But um, yeah, it looks fantastic. Now time for the kitty test. Oh, kitty test approved. Do you like it? Good job. Good job, little girl. Yep. So uh, that's my DIY cat tree and. It's kitty approved. <laughs> She's so cute. Um, yeah, we <laughs> just had to halfway stop. Um, so yeah, this turned out really, really good. And I'm really happy this turned out really well. And my adorable kitty loves it. So yay. Anyways, so um, thanks for watching. Bye, she says. Bye-bye.